We are in the process of starting the recording. Now we're recording. Okay, this is the December 14th meeting of the Weber to See Working Group. Little reminder of the IPR policy, we abide by it, and only people and companies that are listed on that page are allowed to make substantive contributions. Uh, this is the second December interim, and we're going to talk about get current browsing context media, HTML capture capabilities, and testing. And we promise you this is the last virtual interim of 2020. So enjoy the <laughs> holidays. Um, stay safe, everybody. I guess that. Fingers cool. crossed. What? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, right. Uh, most, most fun things you can't do, but do what you can. So one last thing, um, we are looking to complete a doodle poll today for the virtual interim during the week of January 18th to 22nd. Currently, the best date looks like uh, Tuesday, January 19th. But if you haven't responded, please do, and we'll double check and make sure everyone can make it uh, and close the poll today. OK, so a little bit about this meeting. The info is up on the wiki, and the slides are published there. Uh, we do need a scribe. Uh, can we draft you again, Henrik? Uh, sure, yes, I can do it. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we have the IRC channel, wherever to see wiki. OK, so today, this is the agenda. I think we have slides for everything except maybe the last two things. Um, so we'll turn it over to Elad. Thank you. Um, my apologies for having overly verbose uh, slides, but uh, I won't be reading off of them uh, too much. So uh, no worries. Uh, basically, uh, I'm talking about uh, capturing the current tab. And um, I think that there is a new uh, trade-off here between uh, security, privacy, uh, of different user journeys. Um, uh, next, uh, if we think about this, when you uh, ask the user to share, to choose what they're going to share, uh, you're giving them uh, a foot gun. It's very likely that they would occasionally misclick uh, and share their own thing with actual human beings with whom they've got uh, offline relationships and uh, sharing their own thing could even uh, could jeopardize those relationships for obvious reasons. Uh, on the other hand, we know that, uh, next slide, I think that we can skip this one. I think that uh, we know what this is about, what this particular slide is about. And um, so we're going to, um, we're offering to share this tab instead, which means that the user cannot accidentally uh, share their own thing. The only thing that he can do is he can share the current tab and the benefits are uh, significant and obvious, but there are obviously a couple of new dangers in doing that. And the, the danger is that by allowing any part of the pay, well, allowing one origin to capture the entire tab, um, you allow it to circumvent the origin isolation to some degree. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So uh, we recognize four different risks uh, in a page. Uh, one of them is when you capture your own things, uh, you allow, um, you can snoop on the user. So if you present um, links, then you can see if they're purpled. Uh, you can sometimes see auto completion uh, of uh, the user's address or anything else. And that is obviously uh, dangerous. That's danger number one. Danger number two is, and three occur when you've got embedding. So when you embed another cross origin um, content, uh, you can capture it. That's a problem. And conversely, when cross origin is embedded by you and captures you, that's also uh, a potential problem. Uh, and the last one is that if you embed two different things, then they could spy on each other, uh, which is kind of um, you know the next step of uh, both those directions. Uh, so next slide, please. So uh, in this slide, which has way too much text, I'm basically saying that, hey, even if we look at one particular um, one particular example of just capturing the color, we won't actually be able to come up with a comprehensive mitigation for this. We will kind of have to go with uh, case by case for mitigations of capturing your own tab, um, of you even capturing yourself and snooping on the user. And so, for example, one thing that we could say eventually is to say, 
if there is a capture of the current tab going on, don't show links as purple ever because this is problematic. Uh, we could uh, similarly suppress auto-completion and other uh, risky features. Um, next slide, please. Uh, next is if we are embedding a resource uh, and that resource uh, captures us or catches them better. Uh, so there is already a mitigation against this. Uh, display dash capture, uh, it's a feature policy uh, and I believe that Firefox is the only one that is currently implementing that. Um, and they're the only ones currently implementing that and we're suggesting to implement that and to apply that to get current browsing context media as well as uh, get display media. And that should pretty much solve that issue. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, maybe I'm um, just, I'm sorry, uh, one back. It has just uh, occurred to me that maybe some people are less familiar with this uh, uh, policy. This policy basically says, uh, if you don't allow an iframe to, ca uh, to capture, if you do not say display capture and give an allow list that includes you, then they cannot capture. Uh, so, Ne um, next slide, please, now. Thanks. Uh, the other way around is uh, when you're embedding a frame, an iframe, or, and w there is the question of, does it want to be captured by you? Does it trust you enough? So it can already opt out of being embedded, but when it chose not to be opted out of being embedded, it could be that it did not realize that, uh, hey, it could also be captured uh, and inspected by the embedder. Uh, so we're suggesting an opt-out mechanism that would allow uh, resources to uh, to opt out of being captured. And um, I think that this is kind of important for this to be opt out. So to by default for things to be capturable. And I understand that this is the less secure model, but I'm afraid that without going that route, uh, we will end up with the feature never being used uh, because it will be prohibitively uh, difficult. Um, if everything on the page, I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit of feedback here. Um, if everything on the page, and this could be quite a lot of resources, uh, if everything needs to opt in to being captured, uh, it's very unlikely that uh, applications of any significant size would ever be able to capture anything. Uh, if we just look, for example, at the use case of um, Google Docs or Google Slides, then they could one day embed Wikipedia. And even if Wikipedia opts in to being captured because they think everything's okay, one day they start using some other service and everything breaks down, uh, that's gonna be very difficult to maintain. Um, next slide, please. Um, so this is uh, basically what I'm suggesting instead. I'm saying, we could define a new um, permission policy, allow capture by embedder, which by default will say that it's just like the state on the web right now. I allow myself to be captured by anything, but we would also be able to opt out by saying none or saying self or just listing specific, um, specific um, <coughs> origins that may capture it. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. And the last thing is for one iframe capturing another, I'm saying um, that we will just uh, do this transitively. So basically, if I embed two things and one of them allowed me to capture it and I allow the other one to capture me, then there is a chain here and we can be, uh, they can capture each other, at least in that one direction, maybe not in the other direction. Um, that's it. Uh, if anybody would like, I can go into some of the details about any part of this. Uh, but first, maybe there are some thoughts. Quick question on uh, the, this uh, allow capture by embedder. Is it for Get Display Media or is it for the new API? Is it for both? Uh, I think that it would make more sense about, uh, for the new API, although we might want to use it for Get Display Media in the case that the user intentionally chooses the current tab. I think that it makes less sense when it is for a different tab or let, of course it would make no sense when you capture the entire window or the entire display. And for similar reasons, I think it doesn't make sense when you capture a different tab. So I, I don't think that, uh, for example, that, I, that it makes sense for me in a tab that 
uh, in quite a different tab to start allowing or disabling the capture by some other tab. Uh, I don't think that I can be expected to make intelligent decisions about that. I think here the user uh, would have to make the decision. So um, Janavar here, and I have slides coming up as well, so I can hold my comments a little bit. But I have questions about the what you call a permissions policy here, which doesn't really sound like a permissions policy, which is it used to be feature policy, but permissions policy has now been limited more to be only for iframes. Mm -hmm. And it's they're inherently set by the by the container. So in this case, it sounds like you're you allow capture by embedder. If that was set by the embedder, that would be you know kind of useless. So I'm assuming this is set through um, HTML headers or something different, a different mechanism than permissions policy. Is that right? Uh, HTTP headers and yes, and actually um, when I say permission policy, I just mean it. Generally, in fact, I want it to be a document policy because of the inheritance model of permission policies uh, of um, that you can only capture if you're more restrictive, which would be a bit of a problem. Uh, so document policy is what I actually mean, but we can also call this, a, for, for the time being, a permission policy uh, with an HTTP header that you say what can capture you. And it would not make sense to specify that on an iframe attribute, only on the HTTP headers. Right. So note that document policy is not a W3C standard at the um, moment. Not at the moment, that's true. Right. Um, so I guess I understand your motivation for making this an opt-out, but isn't it scary? <laughs> uh, and can't you really do really bad things that people would not expect if you enable that API by default? Um, yes, but I would argue that these things are also to some degree possible with Get Display Media because the page can actually uh, um, encourage the user to choose the current tab and can encourage the user to choose a specific other tab and things like this. So I feel like I'm managing the trade-off here to some degree. And I feel like it's better to introduce a somewhat flawed new API than to not introduce one because I believe that the current state of things is problematic where the user yeah, so, can, is very likely to make mistakes. Yeah, let, let me clarify. I think there are two aspects, two security aspects to this. One is whether to have a dedicated API and the other is uh, the mitigation that uh, document policy provides. I think the dedicated API makes a lot of sense from a user experience, but I, I think as has been discussed, it actually reduces the need for social engineering to get to what you need. So the, the security surface, I think, is bigger than Get Display Media. I mean, you, you can maybe do social engineering with Get Display Media, but this one solves a lot of your social engineering issues, <laughs> if you're the attacker, I mean. Um, and so providing this header as a mitigation, but then making it an opt-out, I think, requires a higher level of confidence than we would have had for Get Display Media. Um, um, can I, I chime in? Uh, sure, and I'll just, um, I want to clarify just my previous answer because I feel that I did not give it well, uh, and then I'll uh, turn the mic over to you. I think that um, what I was trying to say is that uh, an opt-in mechanism would just make it to the uh, get it to the point where nobody would use the new feature to the point of making it irrelevant. So I, that's my argument here. Uh, yes, Henrik. Um, uh, a point about this being so. I, I think I think there's a weird trade-off here, right? Because um, we're talking about social engineering and uh, you know get display media. You, you can't direct the user. And, and all of that is true, but I think with, with Get Display Media, um, the, the danger of oversharing, even on the legitimate websites, is quite strong, uh, which means that if you prevent that ability, uh, as far as legitimate use, uh, websites are concerned, th this does seem less risky of oversharing. You know, you have two windows open. You only need to share one of them, but you accidentally share two of them. I do think it's a trade-off here, but I, I'm interested in 
um, why why it would be so bad for this? Um, like, why why couldn't it be default to to opt opt out? Uh, so l l let me again clarify my understanding of this difference. Uh, of the security risk with get display media so i agree that this api brings some security benefits by avoiding this oversharing risk but it creates a new risk which is again removing some of the friction needed to social engineer for someone to self-own using uh this uh you know show my own website to myself which sounds very innocuous per se um so i guess what i'm saying is Yes, this API solves one of the risks associated with get display media, but it also removes some of the uh, protection that gets display media uh, affords by making it harder to self-share yourself. Um, and so my point, I guess, is that it's not a zero change of security attack surface. Um, and so we cannot claim that we're not missing, making things worse, so it's OK to use an opt-out. Uh, I think the argumentation at least needs to be stronger. Um, I haven't done a full depth analysis of the risk, but you could imagine a website that integrates an iframe from a very innocuous looking uh, uh, other side that gets taken over by spammers that start to use the fact that the initial site does some screen sharing for some reason, and then does really bad thing uh, to the end user who can't figure out that this is a complex attack. So, uh, you know, I have no idea how realistic it is. I don't have even the full flow of uh, permissions and other mitigations that would be in place. But, but I guess the core of my argument is that uh, share this tab API has a different attack surface and get display media. And so we, we can't just rely on the existing mitigation or lack thereof of get display media to claim we are we're on the same ground. Um, I, I at least agree completely. And my concern, so if a mechanism can be brought forth, which is um, good enough, then I'd be happy. I'm just concerned that an opt-in mechanism would not be usable by any application that's big enough and that um, um, <clears throat> that embeds too many resources from uh, third parties. Because even if at any given moment everything works and the capture works, the moment any one of them starts embedding something new, it breaks and then you fix that and then somebody else embeds something else. So it would get to the point where nobody would use this new API, at which point they will use get display media because that's the only alternative. And then that's why I claim that we kind of need to judge the merits of this new API with the less uh, with the lesser security of opt out versus get display media because I think that's what it's gonna boil down to. I, I so, wanted to ask, sorry, go on. No, you go ahead, Tim. I, I wanted to ask what what failure looked like. So, if you if you went for um, opt in, what would failure look like from from the point of view of either the user or the developer? The capture will stop immediately. It can either fail completely or just be paused. But it's clear that we cannot allow even a single frame more that could include something that is opted out, or not, or, or failed to opt in. If, but in, but if Sorry, go. Uh, um, I think if if everything uh, permission wise is on a per iframe basis, uh, then at least in my mind, it's on a per rectangle basis. So wouldn't it be quite easy to just censor out the iframe if it's just you know remove no, a rectangle? So, no. So first, I don't think that it needs to be only iframes. It can also be um, dome. Does not mean you're somewhere on the screen. You could float around any place. So basically, if I had to censor anything, I might be censoring things that move around, maybe even to the point that it's actually obvious what they are, but that's less likely. But, but still, I don't think that would be very uh, serviceable. So uh, Jan over here, and I agree 100% with Dom that uh, I think this is uh, a less safe API, not a more safe API. So having this be a solution 
to a safety problem, we get display media, I think, is a little backwards because the exact protection that this works around is the limitation. What's driving this is that the site does not get to drive what the user shares. As to whether this will sites will use this, I think sites will be highly motivated to use this. So I'm going to present an opt-in mechanism basically in the following slides. And um, it touches on some of these answers. So, but I wanted to have this discussion first. I missed part of the discussion, but uh, I just wanted to say that uh, depending on uh, the, the scope of what, what you capture, if it's the whole tab or if it's part of a tab, then you might have different behaviors. Like if you, if the API is only about the whole tab, then you need the whole tab to be uh, agreed. But if you're only, there may be cases where you only want it part of a tab. And in that case, all the other tabs might not be clean. You, you don't care. It's all, and maybe that- Then I originally had a proposal that you would just, uh, on a document, you would convert that HTML to, to a, a media stream basically. But then you have to deal with things that are uh, not always visible. The iframes and pages can have large areas that are uh, off screen and stuff like that. So I actually think uh, I've come around to uh, capturing the top level tab effectively is actually safer because uh, this is um, some of the uh, things you can do here with uh, capturing, harvesting user information uh, means that you probably don't want this to happen like in the background tab because once once the website can figure out the user is not looking at the tab, they can put all kinds of stuff up on the web page on the web page if it's most are in the following slides. So would it be possible for me to do, run those and we can come back? Yes, please. Discussing this? OK, cool. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to present an opt-in mechanism. And I think we also need to talk about the name. I think uh, get current browsing context media is a little long. But anyway, <laughs> getting ahead of myself here. So I'm calling it get tab media for now, but you can replace it with whatever we end up with. Uh, and I want to talk about securing it with uh, uh, cross-origin uh, embedder policy, which is an existing concept. Next slide. So uh, just to go over the risks again. So the risk here is that you can capture resources cross-origin. And just a reminder for folks that uh, this would actually violate that. Uh, this would actually violate. You can be able to pull in cross-origin images, stuff like that, that would only be visible uh, on uh, on the user's browsers. The users can basically be logged into other sites <clears throat> and only they would normally be able to see these pictures, but now you're able to capture them for, across sites. Uh, there's some improvements in this area. Uh, uh, for instance, we've talked about uh, same site lax is a new mitigation, but that's just changing a default. And there's still a lot of same site equals non use cases out there um, that we need to talk about. Uh, basically, um, where websites are complex, as I would say, and you know you have a lot of arrangements for for images and, and videos and your browser history, form autofill, address, credit card info, that kind of stuff will be captured. Uh, web extensions like LastPass and font size and other things. And on the right there is my uh, over the week I tried to get a BGS account. I was trying to score a PlayStation Five, <laughs> but you know. That was not successful. It was basically like a Twitter coordinated denial of service attack. Uh, but yes, so any kind of autofill would be captured. Next page. <clears throat> so I want to look at the scope here. And I think the scope is actually narrower that the, the, the use cases that I heard that are highly motivated are highly motivated websites that want this. Basically, the prohibitive and integrated HTML capture. And what I found appealing was that they're both based on stream by itself. This is a neat idea from Google. Google Slides streams itself into an ongoing meeting using existing technology like the peer connection. And the same thing for recorded meeting uh, from a client's perspective, because you include all the web layout and things that would be uh, quite performance intensive to do in a canvas. And the page needs only capture itself. So that's simple, right? We could just capture the same origin. And Buy-in is ensured from requiring code and the highly motivated target. And there's no threat of capture from the outside. But of course, sites aren't simple. So there are tons of edge cases here with iframes and, uh, and complicated only share was visible. There can be CSS overlapping elements uh, on top of things. And uh, if we wanted to, say, capture a document 
uh, we might actually have to render twice in the browser, which is not appealing uh, from an implementation point of view. So the proposal A here is basically what Elad suggested. And I also have a next slide, a proposal B. The only modification here is that uh, we could capture the the same area, but but basically cropped to the iframe. And that would give sites a uh, finer control because I've heard rumors that if we go with the first proposal, we're going to be talking about uh, adding uh, cropping APIs. And everyone to read it, it's a good article, kudos to Google. And it basically describes uh, cross-origin and better policy. There's a lot of different acronyms. There's cross-origin opener policy, cores, and corp. So I'll try to cover some of them here quickly. The most important one here is uh, the embedder policy, which prevents the document from loading any cross-origin resources that don't explicitly grant the document permission using corp or cores. With this feature, you can declare that the document cannot load such resources. And they had a great uh, example here, picture with example a, uh, uh, with A and B, sites A and B, that you can specify uh, a header called uh, embedder policy require corp. And once you have that policy, have that policy 